So we'll just start off. Um, obviously, your fight has been announced. I can't pro pronounce his name. Um, yeah. Against the big beat. Jenny. Yeah. Shenka. Uh, what is he? He's a former Olympic gold medalist, so he's he's pretty handy. But let's, let's first of all like start talking about like exactly how that fight kind of came about because that was quite a shock, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I just got a phone call. Um, asked me if I if I fancied the fight. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's do it. And they said, it's in Russia, are you okay with that? And I was like, I'd love to go to Russia. So. When did you get that phone call? Nine days ago, 10 days ago. Was it like that that? anything in your like, mind thinking, do you know what, this is, oh, this is pretty, pretty short notice kind of thing. And you know, um, obviously it's been a bit of a weird year. Yeah, no, cause like two weeks ago, I had like a bit of the flu as well. So I was in the house. So obviously I was, I was pretty run down. I was feeling not the best. And then this phone call came and it just gave me that lease of life to get back out running, get back in the gym. Um, so, no, I'm delighted. I'm delighted this fight's coming. Um, ideally, people say they want six to 12 weeks training camps and stuff um, for a fight, especially one of this magnitude. But I've been training my whole life. I'm, I'm in and out of the gym every other day anyway. So, um, I don't need a six week training camp to get fit. I'm always physically fit anyway. So. I'm ready for this. When, um, when obviously the fight was, uh, you know, put together and that. I mean, how, how much have you seen him? Obviously, I doubt you very much heard of him before. Yeah. Um, but the fight was announced. But I mean, how much have you kind of like looked into him since the fight was announced? Yeah, and I never knew too much about him before. I knew he won the Olympics and stuff. I remember seeing him win the Olympics in Rio, um, and I knew he was a heavyweight. So I was quite surprised at the fights at cruiserweight, especially being six foot five. Um, but I mean, I've looked at his videos on YouTube with Charlie and, and Mark, and we find faults in them that we think that we can expose. Um, it'll be a hard ask. I'm not under any illusion. I know that I'm a massive underdog. Um, everything's stacked in his favour. But this is boxing, and this is where upsets and dreams are made in one night. So it's it's for the WBO European. If, uh, yeah. if I'm right. That gives it like an extra extra incentive because you not only beat one of like Russia's most talented, but it also gives you a, a, a good ranking. Yeah. And potentially the ability to kind of seek out higher ranked opponents and and who knows from there. Yeah. Well, I, I know that he's number five with the WBO and he's in the top ten with the IBF and WBA as well. So it kind of gives me a top ten ranking with every governing body, and um, pretty high with the WBC as well. So. I'm definitely looking to leapfrog British and European level and go straight in there and pull this off. I suppose it, it, it's, it's difficult to look past him, but yeah. like, you know, when, when you kind of got the call for this fight and you looked him up and obviously, you know, the title's yeah. online, like, is it all made you think like, you know, if I, can have a fight, if I win this fight, then doors will open for me. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously you do think, wow, if I, when I win this fight, who knows what can happen, but I'm definitely, my feet are on the ground. I take one fight at a time. Um, for me, this guy is, I treat every fight like, like my last fight. This guy is possibly my last fight. So I'm treating this like my world title fight. This, this is my big fight. In regards, just going back to him a little bit, obviously he's, he's like six foot five. He's pretty, pretty massive for a cruiserweight, yeah. um, which obviously has its pros and cons. You know, obviously he's gonna be you know, quite big and strong and what have you. But the same point is, you know, you've been slightly smaller, you know, the advantage is slightly quicker, maybe get inside yeah. and what have you. Um, you know, obviously you're not going to give away your kind of game plan, but I mean, yeah. you know, what, what sort of things would you, you know, you say that you, you, when you first looked at him thinking, you know, I could have a go here. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's very static. I think he's very robotic. Um, but like the clutch goes used to be, they're, they're always behind that long jab and they, and they like to keep everything at range. Um, so my, my, my game plan, I don't mind giving it away this close to a fight, um, is, to, is to close the distance and to try and unsettle him, mm. make him realise that it's not an Olympic boxing final, this is professional boxing and I'm going to try and manhandle him, so to speak. Um, it sounds a bit stupid saying mm. that as, as the guy's bigger than me, he's six foot five, but I do believe I'll be the stronger of the two of us in that ring and I'm going to be the aggressor. Not to say that I'm going to charge forward and leave myself open. It's going to be pressure, but it's going to be educated pressure from the opening bell. So try essentially like kind of rough him up because it's going to be. A bit, is there going to be fans there? Yeah, it's going to be. Apparently, there's going to be 35,000. Yeah. It's in a really? huge stadium. So, 
yeah, I'm going to try and rough him up. I'm just going to try and unsettle him. The last thing I want to do is, is let him get the distance and, and have a nice night um, boxing behind his jab and, and looking good in front of his fans. I want to try and upset that rhythm um, and, and try and break him down that way. So Silence the crowd as well, don't you, really? Yeah. I think um, with these sort of opponents, like, you know, we're talking off camera, like, with what they've done, you know, it's a short notice fight. So obviously, yeah. he's probably been training over the summer. Um, yeah. You know, d d does it annoy you a little bit that, you know, you, you haven't really been given too much of an opportunity in the UK, but like, this fight's come up and, yeah, okay, it's short notice, but d does it, you know, you see all these like uh, Eddie Hearn shows and Frank Rogers, yeah. does it annoy you a little bit that you haven't been able to kind of get on one of these shows or something like that? Yeah, it does, it does, it does kind of annoy me a little bit, um, but I know that Eddie Hearn's got a long book of fighters he needs to make busy as well, so the last thing he's going to do is, is give a guy like me an opportunity, mm. but once I knock this Tyshenko clean out and win this belt, they can't deny me. It's impossible. I'll just force the mandatory on them anyway. Because the light, uh, sorry, the, the cruiserweight division is, is, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty stacked, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Is, you know, you, you, I think it's an underrated division. Yeah. Obviously, you might have a lot of Eastern European kind of fighters. Um, yeah. I mean, for you, who, who, who's, who's kind of stands out, like, or a fighter that you, you know, ideally like to have a fight with and yeah. you know, kind of styles, you know, like match and what have you. Yeah. Well, I, th I think the number one cruiserweight is Myris Bredis, isn't it, mm. um, from Latvia, and he's only six foot one, so he's yeah. the same same height as me. So, uh, I believe he's orthodox as well. So, it's not like a six foot five southpaw. Mm. Um, but I've got this obstacle to over overcome first, um, mm. and once once I get through to Schenkel, God willing, then then I'll think about further fights. But ideally, uh, I'd love a fight with like Myris Bredis. He'd be the yeah, that'd be. He, he's he's the best in the world, so that, that's who I want to fight. I want to fight the best. It'd be interesting to do another super series because the, the cruiserweights one's pretty. It's always entertaining, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but um, uh, listen, just just go, going back slightly. Obviously, over over lockdown, you know, you said mentioned you weren't too well and stuff. But how's it yeah. been like training wise over lockdown? Have you managed to kind of continue training and and kind of keep that momentum up, knowing that there's no small hall for uh, small hall shows? Yeah, I mean, it was a bit disheartening at the start, especially when I was due to box and yeah, you on call in April yeah. and then I think in Watford as well, two weeks later. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was meant to have two fights in April that got cancelled. So it was a bit disheartening. At the start of lockdown, even this boxing gym, everything was closed for the first few weeks. So it was just a case of going out running and stuff and I tried to keep motivated, tried to buy gym equipment online. Everything was sold out or 10 times the price. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, but then the boxing gym here opened back up, so I managed to get in. So I had a bit of break, but not too much break. I've been I've been training right through lockdown, just waiting on an opportunity like this this coming. Yeah. That's why it's it's not important for me to have six or eight weeks to get ready for a big fight because I'm always in the gym anyway. So. Yeah, I, I remember when we spoke. It was a uh, Paul Gascoigne event, and obviously yeah. you know you signed for Mo. Mm -hmm. And you know, you kind of had a plan for you like this year it was like yeah. two or three fights, and then it was like basically a big, like, big, like either British title or, or English title kind of thing. Yeah. Um, obviously, COVID hit everyone, so you know, it's 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 not not a great situation. But you know, what what was you know what was going through your mind like because obviously you're in inactivity. Uh, was it 2000? Is that 18 you fought last, or was it? Yeah, it's, it's about two years ago. I yeah. boxed. Um, did, did that worry you though? Yeah, no, it's just, it's, you know, my, my whole, longer, my whole career's kind of been stop-start. Um, it would have been nice to get a bit of momentum and and have two or three nice fights built in into a fight, mm -hmm. especially one of this magnitude. But with coronavirus and this pandemic, um, that's obviously it's not going to be the case. So it's either take it now, while I'm young enough to take it, or who knows how long we'll wait for a vaccine. Yeah. And this opportunity might never come back up. I might just be fighting small hole, small hole fights against gentlemen. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, so, um, it, it, it's, it's kind of mad times at the moment. But I mean, did you did you ever think in the back of your mind, like when the COVID hit and you you know you, there was yeah. no potential fights on the horizon for small hole and it probably isn't for a while. Yeah, you know, there was a part of you thinking, oh, I just don't think it's going to work for me. Or you know, it's were you kind of in your mind thinking about packing it in or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it does get it does get quite 
depressing as well, especially when Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren were struggling to put shows on for yeah. the best part of a few months as well. Um, and then some of the big fights came back and, and the small hall was still not returned. But I mean, I try to keep optimistic about things and that's why I've stayed in the gym. I stayed ready and this, this opportunities came. So I'm not going to dwell on the opportunities that are lacked. Um, but just be thankful for that this opportunity has came here and I'm still managing to box in 220 in the middle of a pandemic when mm -hmm. I'm a lot better off than, than a lot of other people and certainly a lot of other boxers who do rely on the small hall shows so I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I've been presented with. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, shout out to Mo for kind of sorting yeah. it out because um, I think he's been quite good. He's, he's got a few of his boxes, uh, I think, on Siesta and yeah. a few other things. So um, obviously he normally puts his own shows on them. Yeah. Um, you know, it's nice that kind of we see these Brits kind of taking their chance because it is a chance, isn't it? Yeah, it's, no, it's a massive no chance. Easy fights kind of fighting abroad mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, what about the, the, the testing, the judging, you know, and all that? Does, does that kind of can have any concerns about that? Yeah, I mean, realistically, we know we're going to Russia. Um, Tushenko's been on the, the right side of a few wrong decisions in the past, um, judging by what's on YouTube. But I know that I'm never going to win on points. I mean, I'm probably technically not good enough to beat him on points, to have a, a boxing mm -hmm. match with him anyway. So I know that I need to knock this guy out. And to a lot of people, it might be like, oh, this is impossible. I never see it that way. Anything's possible. He's been caught before. He can go again. So. Well, we've seen it over like fight camps and yeah. Frank Warren shows. There's been upsets and they happen. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, obviously, we'd be kind of rooting for you. So, um, any idea where how the Brits can kind of watch you at the moment? Yeah, I've been I've been asked this quite, question quite a few times. Um, I know it's on some sort of Russian TV. I'm not entirely sure who the sister broadcaster is. Um, I have asked the promoter the question and I'm still waiting on a reply. Um, so I haven't a clue, but judging by his last fights, they've all been on YouTube and stuff, so um, there, there, will be, there will be some sort of coverage. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get some sort of, um, sort of link. Cool. Yeah. Just want to thank AC Roads and Driveways Limited and Gala Shields for the sponsorship for this fight. It's very much appreciated. Thank you, Alec. And also, I would like to thank Chef Roots for the meals that have helped me maintain and lose over 12 kilograms um, over the last two weeks. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys.